Hello. Welcome to our worship from St Peter's Rawton and with the Deaf Churches. Today, on the first Sunday after Epiphany, we think about when Jesus was baptised in the River Jordan. Let us pray. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children through Jesus Christ our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen Our Bible reading today is from Mark chapter 1 and the title is John the Baptist prepares the way. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God as is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist why do I use this sign, Baptist? Well, that's the sign that's given to John because he welcomed many people uh, into the wilderness and he baptised them by dipping them into the River Jordan. Anyway, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness and he pre was preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair. with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts. And wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to stoop to untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit.
And that time Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, whom I love with you. I am well pleased. Welcome to my sitting room. Here I am, standing here in the living room. I'm by my fireplace and you can see that my crib is still up. I leave it up until February. I have the shepherds and angels, Mary and Joseph and the wise men and they're all looking and worshipping the baby Jesus. Above my fireplace, there's a picture. You can see it. It's as if someone is above Cornwall and looking down on it. Now, maybe it's not clear in the picture as you look at it now, but the, the map of Cornwall has like little lights all over it. And each light represents a church. Then in the sky above, there's a whole procession of people, they're saints, coming from the west and bringing the light of Christ 
to Cornwall. I grew up in Cornwall and it was there that I learnt about my faith and where I decided to follow Jesus. I would really like to tell you about that. So when I was 17, I belonged to a church youth group and we all went off on holiday together to a Christian conference centre. And it was there that I decided to follow Jesus. And that experience, that overwhelming experience of believing in Jesus, experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit, has always stayed with me. I'll always remember it. I felt as if I was new and everything was different. It was amazing. Later, I reflected on my life and I realised, looking back, that there had been other times when I'd known that God had been there. There had been people who had taught me, such as Sunday school teachers, my parents, friends, people at school. They had all helped me because they knew that Jesus was important and they wanted me to know that too and to look to him. What happened on that holiday was amazing and it was important but it was like it was the end of a long journey that had started earlier in my life and of course that journey continues every day. And I know that a lot of people have similar experiences. When they look back in their lives, they realise that there have been people there who have helped them, who have taught them, who have shown them Jesus and helped them to look to him. And maybe other people would say, well, no, there weren't any of those people in my life. I literally became a Christian from knowing nothing. And other people who would say, well, I've always believed all through my life. It, it doesn't matter. All people have different life experiences and different experiences of their journey to faith. Now, our Bible reading today from Mark's Gospel is about John the Baptist. His role, his work, was to remind people that somebody was coming. Someone who was much more important than he was. Now, he was a rather strange man. He wore strange clothes, he ate strange things, he preached vehemently, and he lived in the desert. But he knew he had a strong sense of his own ministry which was to tell people you need to get ready through repenting of your sins and being baptized because someone is coming the messiah is coming john explained that the person coming, the Messiah, would pour out his spirit. And thinking about my own life journey, all those people who helped me and taught me about Jesus were good, but in the end it was the Holy Spirit who enabled me to make that final connection and become a Christian. It was the Spirit's work. So Jesus came and John baptised him. And when he was baptised, two things happened. As he came out of the water, the Holy Spirit rested upon him. 
like a dove. And the voice from heaven said, This is my son, my beloved son. I am pleased with him. So God the Father recognised Jesus as his son. God really doesn't want us to live far from him. God wants us to be able to look to him and recognise Jesus. God searches for us. He wants us to come and live in a relationship with him. And we might do that through our friends, through church, or just sitting quietly in our own room and be being with God. God wants us in relationship. That's why this time is called Epiphany. Epiphany means showing or revelation. It's a little bit like when you're struggling to understand something or looking for something and you suddenly go, oh, I've got it. Oh, I see. God wants you to say, oh, I've got it. I understand. I know Jesus. What about you in your life? Where are you on your life journey? Do you feel that you're right there in relationship with God or do you feel rather far away or maybe you feel you just don't know? Maybe today is the right time to ask God to show himself to you. Maybe through this service, maybe through friends, maybe through a Zoom chat later or whatever. John the Baptist's message. Get ready because the one is coming who is so important. Look to him. That's a message for us. Amen. Baptism had a very special place in the early church and has continued to be the mark of our following of Jesus Christ. But for the people living at the time of Jesus, baptism by immersion or pouring water could have many meanings. It was sometimes a sign of purification, a cleansing from sin or ritual impurity or it could signify healing. Naaman, the Gentile Syrian commander with leprosy, was told by the prophet Elijah to dip seven times in the River Jordan, and he was healed and made new. Here, Sharon Kershaw tells of her experience of dipping in the waters at Lourdes and how she felt the presence of the Spirit on her. Hello. When I was 16, I went to a place called Lourdes. The sign is Lourdes on my shoulder here, and Lourdes is in the south of France. And I went, as many people do, and I went with a group of disabled children. And whilst I was there, I noticed a queue, and somebody said, oh, do you want to go? It's like baptism in there. So I joined the queue and went in, and they had like a bath, just, just a sort of small pool. And they had two people, one at either end. Um, we um, took our clothes off and put on like a towel. And then we went and to the water and they said some words. I, I didn't understand what was being said. And then they said, are you ready? And I said, yes. And then they took me down by my shoulders into the water and out. 
the water was freezing. But afterwards, I felt different. It was very nice. They, 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 I didn't get dry. I just put my clothes back on. And outside, I felt different. Something, something, something really different. It was freezing, but I felt warm and I felt happy. Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptised into his name may keep the covenant that they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Saviour, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory for ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who have confessed your name in baptism. And remember especially those who experience persecution for their profession of faith. Give your people repentance for their sins and the strength of your Holy Spirit to live lives worthy of our calling by you. We thank you, Lord God, that you promise to us the power of the Holy Spirit to work within us and guide us in your ways and strengthen us in your service. May we never be proud of our own achievements May we never be overwhelmed with the challenges which face us, recognising that in all things it is your strength that works in us. Whatever we may have to endure or enjoy, we thank you that you walk with us. We pray for those who have troubled lives, those who are addicted to harmful things which threaten their lives, those who've been badly damaged and broken. Lord Jesus, we know that you reached out to those whose lives had hit rock bottom. And you touch, your touch brought forgiveness, healing and change. We ask that you would enable us to be your healing touch amongst those who have not known the power of your love. Give us your willingness to be alongside those who suffer and are in need. And may we be faithful messengers of your good news. Amen. Today in our country, as coronavirus cases soar, and as we've just recorded, the highest ever daily death toll due to coronavirus. As our hospitals are filled, we pray, Lord, have mercy on our land. Give us courage and love to isolate and protect each other. Help us to gladly sacrifice our own needs and wants. 
for the greater good. Amen. Jesus Christ bless you all and pour his peace on your homes. May his spirit rest on you. Amen. And before you go, I have just a little favour to ask. If you've already done so, if you've not already done so, please click the subscribe button below or in my picture at the end of this video to subscribe to this channel. It costs you nothing and it helps these videos to be more visible to people searching YouTube. Please like and share this video with your friends and on Facebook. We work hard to bring these videos to you and want this to benefit as many people as possible. And finally, we love to get your comments. Tell us what you thought, what we can improve or 
topics and themes you'd like us to cover. See you next time.